Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooded Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. It's that time of the week again where I get to invite you to join me to, to uh, study the Word of God together this evening. I am so excited about what the Lord is saying to us, and I'm excited about being a Christian in times like these. Someone asked me one day, said, wouldn't what is the source of your excitement? Well, I'll tell you, I have many, but one of the major sources of my excitement comes from uh, uh, is, let me rephrase that, Brother Gary, one of the uh, major sources of my excitement is that I'm not doubting about the way. I know that holiness is right. I know that the God of the Bible is the true and living God. I know that Jesus Christ is going to return. I know, praise the Lord, that the Bible is the word of God. And so when you know it, all listen, it causes you to walk in a level of joy and peace that people who are not convinced will never have. And the relationships that God has blessed me to form, my friends, the relationships that we form with each other, hopefully I've had the same effect on you as you've certainly had on me. And that is, uh, if you're born again and you were born again when we met each other, that is, we strengthen one another's resolve. We strengthen the resolve of each other to stay with the Lord. A quick little story before I move on. Uh, my wife and I went to a particular restaurant uh, on last evening celebrating Valentine's Day. She and I was together. I took her out. I tell you, I think that I had the most beautiful lady uh, in the whole place on my arms. And there we were. And how about this? Uh, this particular place that was recommended to us. Uh, it's a beautiful, wonderful place. But they don't take reservations. So first come, first serve. And what I did was I pulled up and uh, uh, my wife got out and she got in the line. And I went and parked the car. And by the time I, I, I walked up to where she was, I said, well, baby, here I am. And we were standing there. And how about this? There was a couple standing behind us, a wonderful, beautiful couple that loved, who also loved Jesus Christ. And that woman of God said to me, are you a preacher? I said, yes, ma'am. Are you Bishop Wooden? I said, yes, ma'am, I am. And she introduced me to her husband. I introduced her to, and her husband to my lovely wife. And we began to talk. And she said to me, I've been following the, your, your ministry. I discovered you a few months ago. And I've been following the word of the Lord uh, from you. And, and she said this, I have been looking for some place to worship, some place to go, some place where I can hear the word of the Lord. And she says, God speaks to me. And uh, the Lord deals with me as to whether uh, that man of God is preaching the true word of the Lord. And she said, I've been following your ministry and I want to come and visit your church. And it's amazing that we would end up in this line at this time uh, together. And we rejoiced together. And uh, we, of course, we, Pam and I was honored and humbled and delighted. And we invited them to come and I prayed to, to God that they will. But here's what took place in that exchange while people was looking as we were fellowshipping and enjoying Jesus together. We strengthened one another's resolve. Our minds and our hearts are already fixed and made up to serve the God of the Bible. They didn't see me and then uh, get inspired to be saved. And I pray I, I, that I can ex inspire as many souls as uh, people as possible. But that day, two, uh, four believers met in a line and uh, uh poured into each other, and it reminds me of what happened with uh, Peter and John after they were threatened. You know, sometimes when God uses you, sometimes you get in trouble because you allowed the Lord to use you. The Lord used Peter and John. They prayed for the man who was by the gate called Beautiful and said to that man, you know the words, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I to thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And that man looking at them, grabbed them by the hand, leaped up and they st he stood. And the Bible says, and, and Peter fastened his eyes upon 
upon uh, him, upon him with John, said, look on us. And, uh, and, and the Bible says that he gave heed, looking on them, expecting to receive something, expecting to receive something. He, he certainly wasn't expecting what he got. He probably thought he'd get a little money. But I'm grateful, for Brother Gary, that the scripture says he was he was expecting to receive something. What's the lesson there? Stop putting God in a box. Stop telling the Lord how to bless you. Amen. Some of you, because it hadn't come in the mail, it's not in the mail, you think it's not coming. But I want you to know the God of the Bible had multiple ways of blessing you. It, it may not come through the mail. It may not come from FedEx. It may not come from any uh, of, of, uh, of these deliveries. But God knows how to get what he has for you to you. Just don't. Cuff his, cuff his hands and tell him how to do it. Don't put God in a box. Look to the Lord expecting to receive something. Now, I'm getting off, but this man, he, Peter said to him, silver and gold, knew, knowing that that's what he was expecting. Uh, have I none but such as I have? I uh, give out to thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Walk, And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. The man walked in the temple and uh, went into the temple with them. He went in walking and leaping and praising God according to Acts chapter 3 verse 8. And the people who were looking on, it was an amazing thing to see. Uh, they began to say, hey man, this guy. I looks like the guy who's been laying out there by the gate. Hey, he favors him. Could that be him? And the man let them know it's me. Praise God. But how about this? With a great miracle like that, and people were looking with wonder and amazement, according to chapter 3, verse 10, everybody's excited. And they asked, how did it happen? And Peter told them, it happened in the name of Jesus. He let them know that the power did not come from him. The power didn't come from John, but that the power came from Jesus Christ. And in chapter 3, verse 16, it says, and his name and through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom you see and know yea the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all he said this thing was done in in the name of Jesus and faith in that name that created a problem because the authorities, the powers that be, the elites, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the ruling class, thought that they had gotten rid of Jesus Christ, thought that they had uh, 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 crucified him on the cross, put him in Joseph's new tomb, tomb, and that's the end of him. And by the way, when they heard some story, about him getting up three days later from the dead, or oh, they just put out a convenient lie. About like, you know what? The Bible says there's nothing new underneath the sun. <laughs> it's like they lie now. Oh, oh, but I mean, you can't hardly believe a thing that you see uh, in the news, what they tell you, because my friends, they tell you what they want you to know. You hardly ever get the actual story. And so they put out a lie saying that someone stole his body and that they thought that they figured that was it. But then, but then problems began to take place. When the day of Pentecost had fully come and the people was in the upper room, 120 of them, they got filled with the Holy Ghost. They began to speak in tongues and the church age was born and they, it, it, it began to grow. And so here's this man, certified, certified. He is, Gary, he is lame. He's been lame uh, for 30 some odd years and the best they could do is lay him by the gate. Then he gets healed in the name of Jesus. And the powers that be, my friends, just, just hang with me just two more minutes. The powers that be the, uh, called Peter and John on the carpet and examined how this man was healed. Peter said in chapter 4, verse 10, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, 
<laughs> whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. It happened by the power that's in the name of Jesus, who is not dead, whom God the Father raised him, raised from the dead. And then Peter said, this is the stone which you build the set at naught. And this stone has become the headstone of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under the heavens given among men whereby we might be saved. They threatened them, told them that the preacher the more in Jesus' name, threatened them to, to, to keep it from spreading any further. And the Bible says in verse 21, so when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they may punish them because, the, because of the people, for all men glorified God for what was done. Look at this. For this man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle uh, of healing uh, was shown. And look at, look at this. Look at this. Verse 23 says, and being let go. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. You know, uh, Brother Leach, he didn't know I was going to say this, but uh, this kind of reminds me of when he and I get a chance to do this. We get a chance to visit. We get, you know, he sets up his equipment. He gets me uh, ready for it, puts the mic where it's supposed to be. And, and, and uh, when one of the cords are showing, he makes sure all that stuff is right. <laughs> but you know what? What happens is in our time together, preparing to speak to you, I don't know if he sets out to do it intentionally. I don't set out to do it to him intentionally, but it seems to me it's an automatic thing. And I believe that it is uh, uh, two ways. I know it certainly is with me. My resolve is strengthened. In spending time with my brother, I am made stronger. My, my belief in Jesus Christ is buttressed. It's not challenged. I don't, I don't walk away when, he, when it's over. I don't, I don't feel discouraged. I don't feel like we can't make it. Wondering, God, are you really there? No, my brother pours into me. And hopefully we pour into him and we strengthen one another in the name of Jesus. And thank God, you ought to thank God. I pray that when you attend your church service, that you are amongst your own company, that you're with people who believe like you believe, uh, that, that you uh, walk according to the same rules, that you mind the same thing, that you are all subject to the word of God. And when those people heard what had taken place with with Peter and John, they broke out in a prayer. They began to, to call on the name of the Lord. They began to quote Psalms chapter 2, verse 1. And after they began to pray and, and ask God for strength, the Bible says, And when they had prayed, the place were shaken where they were assembled together and they being filled. Look at this. And they look at this now. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. When the people told them, don't say anything else. After they spent a little time with their own company, after they spent a little time in prayer with people who were like-minded, God stepped in and filled them again. He refilled them with the Holy Spirit. And he enabled them, gave them the energy, the desire, the strength, the wisdom to know, the know-how to speak the word with boldness. They even, they even became more bold. And tonight, my friends, that is exactly the effect that I pray that the word of God will have on you. That's why we do this. This is for the lost, but this is also for the found. 
Someone said to me one time, you know, if you're having church and you're not winning souls, you're not doing anything. I differ with that. I believe we're doing something because one thing we're doing is we're strengthening, as the Bible says, those that remain. We're strengthening them that remain. We're strengthening one another. We're pouring into each other. We're strengthening one another's resolve. My heart is fixed. My mind is made up. I'm going to serve the Lord till the day I die. And I'm sure my friends, you feel the same way. So I want to invite you to come out tonight here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> yes, Bible study. You come out. We're going to study the word of God together and the effect that the word of God is going to have on you. If it doesn't make you a millionaire, if you don't get a whole lot of material things by tomorrow morning, uh, you know, all the stuff that they say now is going to happen. You know, if, um, uh, if, if he doesn't give you a, a private jet, if, if, if he doesn't, if God doesn't uh, behave like your, your personal genie and so he just, he just exists to give you everything you want, when you want it, the way you want it, how you want it, and all that. Now, I can't guarantee that, but I, I'll tell you this. If you come with your heart open and if you listen and you bring your Bibles, the Word of God will strengthen your resolve. We'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.